you're giving thanks for the event before it's happened. Your body's so objective, it's believing that it's happening to you, because what is the emotional signature of gratitude? When you get something favorable, you receive something favorable, something just happened to you that you like, something's happening to you, you say, I thank you. The feeling of gratitude, the emotional signature, means it's happening to you, it's already happened. So it is the ultimate state of receivership. So teach a person how to give thanks before it happens, open their heart, and their heart's like a pounding of a drum or dropping a pebble in water, is producing these, this field. It's that energy, that creative energy can carry the thought of their health. It can ride, that intention can ride on the wave that could be wealth, new relationship, suffering, and the energy does not carry the thought of health, it carries a different set of thoughts. So people say to me, well, I can't open my heart. Well, I ask them, well, what, what do you practice feeling all day long anyway? Because you're so good at feeling something else, you haven't practiced feeling it. They have to keep overcoming their thoughts, overcoming their impatience, overcoming the programs, overcome, they come right up against it. Anything that's standing in the way between them and their connection, they gotta do business with it. And so as they start removing those veils, those masks, those layers, and they start crossing that river of change and their heart starts to open a little bit and they feel a little bit more and they feel a little bit more and their brain is coherent. Now they have a coherent brain and a coherent heart. The balance between the two is an exchange of information that's not coming from out there, it's coming from within them. And now they have a Wi-Fi signal and now they're connected. When, you, when your heart opens and your brain is coherent, you feel connected to something greater. You don't feel separate any longer. So then, can you then get so good at it that no person, no condition, no experience in your life is going to move you from it? That's the name of the game. That's the Wi-Fi signal now. And so now, whatever you broadcast into the field is really your experiment with destiny. Not, not, for, the, not for the whatever you get, but for the fact that you created it. That's the fun part. And then, you know, so many people, they, I have people in our work that created so much wealth. You know the first thing they did? They gave it away. Well, of course they would, because they now believe they can create it again. Like, so now what? Now you just get good at giving. Like, it's no longer about that. You know, what do you want? You know, what are you, you're going to get that car, and then you're going to be like, you know, I'd rather drive the Mini. I don't really care about that whatever car. I'm just happy with what I have. So when you're, when you're at that point where you're so whole that you don't care what people think about you, when you're so happy with yourself that you're free, you don't care what you look like, you're just happy with you, man, that's freedom for people. That's so much freedom. So it brings me great joy to witness transformation. And that formula then, I always tell people, don't work on your healing. Work on learning the formula. Once you learn the formula, and get it down, the healing will be the side effect. And you either live in survival or you live in creation. And, and living in creation is such an elegant moment because you have to disconnect from everything known and you have to get so present that time is no longer of the essence. You are in the internal present moment. This is a flip because when we're living by our senses in three-dimensional reality, this space-time continuum, there's an infinite amount of space. And with an infinite amount of space, I'm local. I have a body, I'm local in space and time. And then I want to move from here to the door. At one point of awareness, Joe Dispenza, my other point of awareness, the door. So in order for me to go from here to the door, I got to move my body through space. And guess what? That takes time. So if I'm creating matter to matter, here's me, Joe Dispenza, where's my dream? Way over there. Why is it way over there? Because my brain is automatically estimating how long I'm going to have to work and go back and forth to work. And it's going to take time and it's going to take energy to finally manifest that home or that car or whatever. And you're going to have to work hard or you're going to rush faster to get it done. And when you finally pay off that house or whatever, you're too tired, too exhausted to enjoy it. When you pass through the eye of the needle into the quantum, and you enter that realm of time-space, it's a different world. There's an infinite amount of time. Time is eternal. There's an infinite amount. Now think about this. How much could we get done if we had an infinite amount of time? And in the realm of time-space, there's no past, there is no future. It's all happening now. And so there's no past lives or future lives. There's 
stacked on top of each other. And as we move through time, as we time travel, we experience dimensions or spaces. And we have all the latent systems in the brain once activated to open the door to that dimension. And it only takes one experience of entering that place that you cannot see the world the same way again.